Welcome to Electro Online. For those who saw the previous video and had doubts about the answer that the bird needs to take an infinite number of trips back and forward before the trains meet and before one hour have elapsed, we're going to try to prove that to you, that that is indeed the correct answer. We left off with the assumption that the initial distance between the trains was 100 kilometers and that it took 0.5 hours to make the first round trip for the bird. At that point, the trains would be 50 kilometers apart and then the second round trip would only take a quarter of an hour. At that point, the trains would be 25 kilometers apart and the next trip would only take one eighth of an hour. Then the trains would be 12 and a half kilometers apart and the next trip would take one sixteenth of an hour and you're beginning to see the pattern. So why an infant number of trips? Well, let's go back over here and add up all the times, a half hour, a quarter of an hour, an eighth of an hour, a sixteen, a thirty-two, thirty-second, and so forth. In other words, an infinite number of additions from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. But what is that equal to? Does that indeed add up to an hour? So the way we can prove that is to have a series for the first n terms. So we can write that as s sub n, and that would be equal to 1 half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus and so forth, all the way to plus 1 over 2 to the n uh, minus 1 plus 1 over 2 to the n. So basically, instead of writing 2, 4, and 8, what we could do is we could do 1 over 2 to the first power, 1 over 2 to the second power, 1 over 2 to the third power, and so forth, all the way up to that. And that would be the same as what we have over here, but only for the first n terms. Now let's double that number. Let's write 2 times s to the n or 2s sub n, which means twice the first so many terms. I'm going to multiply every one of these terms by 2, and so this would be 2 over 2 to the first power, plus 2 over 2 to the second power, plus 2 over 2 to the third power, plus all the way to plus 2 over 2 to the n minus 1 power, plus 2 over 2 to the n power. So when you take a look at that, we can rewrite this as this is equal to 1, plus 1 over 2 to the first power, plus 1 over 2 to the second power, plus all the way up to plus 1 over 2 to the n minus 2 power, plus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 power. So now I can claim that s sub n would be equal to 2 times s sub n minus s sub n. So I'm going to subtract this from that to see what we would get. If we do that, we get the following. This is equal to... 1 plus, and I'm going to recopy all this, 1 over 2 to the first, plus 1 over 2 to the second, plus all the way to 1 over 2 to the n minus 2, plus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. And I'm going to subtract from that the series that I had before, and so that would be equal to 1 over 2 to the first, plus 1 over 2 to the n. I'm running a little bit of out of room there. But now notice when I subtract this from this, this term cancels out with this, and this term cancels out with this, and so forth. The next term would cancel out with this. And finally, 1 over 2 to the minus 2, well, that would cancel out with the previous one, and 1 plus 2 to the n minus 1 would cancel out with this, and only one term would be remaining, which I need to subtract. In other words, S sub n is equal to 2 times s sub n minus s sub n, which is equal to 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n power. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to let n go to infinity. So in the limit, and let me write that again, in the limit, as n goes to infinity, s sub n, which is the sum of the first so many n terms all the way up to infinity is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n. And of course, uh, now let n go to the limit, 1 over 2 to the n, when n goes to infinity, that becomes 0, so this is equal to 1 minus 0, which is equal to 1. And so you can see that an infinite sum 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 and so forth, all the way to n becoming infinitely large, that all adds up to 1, 
In other words, if I add up all the times of all the trips the bird takes, an infinite number of trips, the total amount of hours it would take would be exactly one hour for an infinite number of trips of the bird. So you can see that, yes indeed, there's an infinite number of trips, and this is how you prove that.